Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to go over what is the z-score. We might also hear it called z-value. Now this explanation is probably done best with a or an example. So, so here's our frequency polygon. Remember now we're dealing with normal distributions and so our frequency polygon looks like a normal curve. And so we have our center which is the mean, mean, and end mode. Um, I just labeled it as mean, but it's both the median and mode. And it's a 70. So, and I also have a standard deviation of 12. So, let's take a look at um, a score of, say, 82. Okay. All right, so an 82 would be up here. And you can clearly see that not many people compared to, say, who got a 70. There's not many people, you know. Um, you know, much lower than the people who got a 70, or much lower than the people who got around a 70. Now, a z-value or z-score is very easy to describe. It is simply the distance uh, in terms of the standard deviations, the number of standard deviations you are away from the mean. Okay, so take take a look at 82. How many standard deviations is it away? Now. If you look between 70 and 82, it's clearly 12%, right? All right, we're just talking about percents now. It's clearly 12% difference between the mean and 82. But what's 12% in terms of a standard deviation? Well, 12% equals one standard deviation. So 82 is exactly one standard deviation away from 70. Okay, well, what about 24%? That's exactly two standard deviations. So in this case, two standard deviations away would bring us up to a 94%. Okay, you kind of see how this works? So again, a z value or z score is the number of standard deviations. Okay, and I've put the definition down here. A z score or z value, the number of standard deviations a particular value is away from the mean. Now, when it's set up like this, where you can clearly see that it's 12% away between these two, and that's one standard deviation, and between 70 and 94, that's 24%, which is exactly uh, two standard deviations, what happens if they're not nice numbers like this? For example, what if I had the score of um, about 78? How many standard deviations is 78 away from 70? And it's not, you know, you can tell it's not one. So it's going to be less than one standard deviation. So we need a way, a fi uh, like a formula, to figure out how far away these two are. And fortunately, we have a formula for just that. So here's our formula down here. Z is going to equal, now what's X? X is our particular value. Okay, so I'm just label that. X is our particular value. It's like 82 or 94 or 78. And you're going to subtract mu, which is the mean, and then you're going to divide by the number of standard deviations. So we already said 82 is one standard deviation away. Well, let's check that. Okay, over here we'll do z equals, so we'll take 82 minus 70 over the standard deviation, that's sigma down there, that's 12. And so that's going to give me 12 over 12, which is exactly one standard deviation. Okay, so what about 78? Well, it's going to be z equals, so we'll take 78 minus 70 over 12. So that's going to be 8 over 12. And as a decimal, that's 0 0.6. I'm just going to round to two decimals. That's 0.666 repeating. Uh, so I'll just round the two decimals. So it's 0.67 standard deviations away. Now what happens if we take a value less than 70? So let's try, say, how about um, 51? Okay, how far away is 51 from 70? Well, you might say 19%, and that's true. But I want the z value now, and the z value is how many standard deviations? So we'll have z equals 51 minus 70 over 12 which we said is, nine, well, it's going to be negative 19 over 12, which equals negative 1.58.
Now this negative isn't really important. Um, what we really care about is the, the actual number 1.58. So uh, 51 is exactly, well, we rounded here. So 51 is about 1.58 standard deviations away. Okay, so z equals 1.58. Now the negative is just telling you which direction we're going. So if you have a z value that's negative, it just means that my value is to the left of my mean. So you might be asking yourself, why is all of this important? Why do we care about z values? Uh, why is the normal curve even useful? What's great about the normal curve is that uh, when you know the mean and the standard deviation, you can figure out what proportion of people in this example, like what proportion of people scored between a 71 and a, or sorry, a 51 and a 70? In other words, out of all those test scores, okay, because I, I don't have a frequency distribution, but I can estimate the percentage of people who scored in here, okay, somewhere in here. So the anyone that scored between a 71, or I'm, wow, I did it again, a 51 and a 70, and a normal curve, we can do that. What's great is we're going to be able to associate the percentage of people between any two scores uh, by just knowing the z value. And that's going to tell us the percentage. Now, I will warn you that there are many different tables that will do this. The one that I will be using looks like this one right here. Um, and there's a lot of different ones, and so you have to be very careful about it. But they'll, they'll, what you'll see is next to the normal, this is called our normal table, and next to it you'll probably have a picture, which I do have down here, and it describes how the z-value and the percentages uh, correspond to each other. So the way that this z-table, or I should say normal table, work is the z is going to represent the distance between the mean and your value. Here's our x. Remember, x is our particular value. And there's our center, our mean. And z represents the distance in terms of standard deviations. And so when you go up to this table, you'll see all these percentages. That's what we label with a p. And these percentages are the shaded region down here. Okay. So for example, when you go one standard deviation away, Okay, so here's our one standard deviation. If you come down here, that means the percentage of people who scored between the mean and whatever score is one standard deviation away, we can say is roughly 34.1%. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at our example. All right, so the percentage of people who scored between a 70 and an 82, okay? Um, and we've already checked this, but that was one standard deviation. So down here, the percentage of people uh, between a score of 70 and 82, because that's exactly one standard deviation away, and we, and we saw on the table that that was 34.1%. Well, how about the percentage of people between 51 and 70? Well, I erased it, but, oh no, here it is. The distance between 51 and 70 in standard deviations is 1.58. Well, I know the z value. Let's go take a look at the normal table. All right, 1.58. All right, notice I'm rounding to one decimal here. So 1.58 will be about 1 1.6, okay? And that's 44.5%. So that means that the percentage of people who score between 51 and 70 percent is roughly 44.5 percent.